Hey guys, what's going on? Coach Justin here from Ultimate Baseball Training. And in today's video, I wanted to share with you how to develop the perfect throwing motion. I'm gonna give you some tips and some mechanical tweaks that you can make to ultimately improve your throwing accuracy and your velocity as well. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into the video. All right, so the very first tip that I have for you, we're going back to basics here because sometimes it's necessary to take one step back so we can take three steps forward, right? So check your grip. That's the very first thing. We wanna make sure in order to have the most true ball flight, we wanna make sure that we have a good solid four seam grip with our thumb underneath the baseball. Okay, I see a lot of players, first of all, you know, they might, instead of having a good four seam grip, they might have their third finger on here like this. They might have their thumb kinda of on the side of the ball like this instead of underneath. So we need to make sure that we have a good four seam grip on the baseball. We don't wanna be choking the baseball. I see an, another thing is a lot of players don't have any space in between uh, you know, their hand right here and the baseball. They end up choking the ball like this. That's almost like throwing a change up. We wanna avoid that at all costs. So make sure that we have a good four seam grip. Again, that's the very first thing that I want you to master and the first thing I want you to check because that's gonna allow for the most true ball flight. A great way to work on getting into a good four seam grip is to just throw the ball up to yourself kind of like I'm doing now and try to get to a good four seam grip as quickly as you can. You can do this at home, you can do it while you're watching TV. You can also lay on the ground in your living room or lay on your bed and just toss the ball up to yourself and as it comes down, try to get to that good four seam grip as quickly as possible. For you younger players, you might have to look at the baseball to really align your fingers properly, uh, but eventually you're gonna get the hang of just doing it without even looking and then you are gonna be set up for success in terms of throwing. All right, so once we have a good four seam grip, now let's get into actually throwing. So I always talk about throwing starts from the ground and works its way up. And I wanna reiterate that point in today's video. Throwing really starts with our big muscles, with our legs, right? Our legs, our big muscles are a lot stronger than let's say the little muscles, the four muscles that make up our rotator cuff, right? So we can work on, you know, speeding up our arm all day, but unless we have strong legs and unless we learn to throw with our big muscles, throw with our legs, we're not gonna be able to throw the ball with much velocity. So it starts from the ground, all right? So all of our momentum, all of our velocity comes from that ground force really driving down through the ground. From there, once we drive through the ground, that works its way, all that energy works its way up the kinetic chain, works its way into our core, right? And then our core, it transfers into our arm and eventually it goes out of our fingertips when we make the throw. But just the biggest thing is understand that throwing does not come from just all arm, right? I guarantee you, try this actually, next time you go to the field, warm up like you usually would, make sure your arm is nice and loose, nice and ready to throw, but try to just go down on both knees and eliminate your lower half and try to see if you can throw as hard without your legs as with them. And I guarantee you're not gonna be able to do it. It's because your legs are the strongest part of your body, so we have to use them. All right, so that being said, starts from the ground, works our way up. Let's start from the ground right now. Let's say that I am throwing to you. A common problem that I see, and this is something that I want you to check, maybe you can have somebody videotape you, that'd be a great way to check this. A lot of times when players go into their throwing motion, they think that they are square to their target when actually their front foot opens up just ever so slightly uh, to my left side here. So it's almost like I'm stepping in the bucket a little bit, or vice versa, they're, they're stepping across their body just a little bit like this. Either way, if I step in the bucket, my arm is gonna lag behind like this, I'm probably gonna push the ball to the right. I experienced a problem with that when I was a little bit younger and I just stepped in the bucket just a little bit, my arm lagged behind and I pushed everything to the right. You're also gonna have problems if you step this way because you're really just fighting against your body and you're not gonna have much control and much velocity. So that's the first thing, your feet when you throw, they have to be square and in line to your target. You can draw a line on the ground like this to make sure that they are square to your target. Now, when you take your stride, you do not have to have your front toe closed like this. That is not a very powerful position. I don't recommend you do that. I recommend it, it be open about 45 degrees, same as if we were hitting, right? It's open about 45 degrees. Not open like this and not closed like this. Slightly open, but you'll notice it's still on this line. 
So we need to make sure our feet are in line, our hips are in line, and our shoulders are in line to our target as well. From there, guys, we have a good grip. Everything is in line with our target. And now the throwing motion becomes really natural. I think players get into a lot of trouble both at the plate hitting and throwing and pitching when they worry too much about mechanics. So I wanna encourage you to keep it natural. You naturally know how to throw. It's just that when you know we get a little bit older and we start making little tweaks here and there, then we get all discombobulated, right? So I could just sit here and tell you, okay, load and stride and separate and pause and get to all these positions and act like a robot. I don't believe in that. I believe that you need to keep it natural. So with that being said, everything's in line, right? We got a good grip. Basically, whether you're hitting or throwing, you're gonna have some motion backwards or some sort of gather, some sort of load, right? So we're gonna load our backside. We are then gonna stride towards our target. Same with throwing, same with hitting, right? We have a load, we have a stride. And then from there, uh, we start our hip rotation and that energy transfers to our core, transfers to our arm, and really our arm just kind of goes along for the ride, right? We're not really, uh, you know, focused too much, honestly, on manipulating our arm or anything like that. If we get our lower half in good solid throwing positions, same with hitting, if we get into a good position with our lower half, our hands and everything else, it's just gonna kind of naturally fall into place. So again, we are in an athletic position. We're not standing up tall like this. We're not too ridiculously hunched over. We're in an athletic position, okay? Let's act like I just caught the ball and playing catch with my partner. We're gonna step, we're gonna block our back foot off. We're gonna go into some sort of a load, right? So we step, we load, we stride. As we stride, our hands separate equal and opposites. My throwing side is not going back while this side stays here. That looks awkward, right? They're equal and opposites. And we want our thumbs to break down like this towards the ground, down like this. Now a quick little tidbit, with your throwing hand, try to keep your fingers, these top two fingers here, try to keep them pointing towards the ground for as long as you can in your throwing motion, right? Try to keep them pointing towards the ground. A lot of coaches used to teach, you know, point your fingers to center field, and there's been some studies that show that that puts way too much stress on your arm if you point it all the way back towards center field like this. But I have found if you just try to focus on keeping your fingers pointing towards the ground, your fingers are almost pointing towards center field, but not quite, and it keeps you in a healthier position for your arm, all right? So again, we make our catch, right? We go into make sure everything is square. We go into our load and our stride. Equal and opposites separate. Almost like you're pulling a, 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 a slingshot back or a bow and arrow back. That's the same type of motion we make in our backward motion here. And then from there, we just go into our throwing motion and you always wanna make sure that you're following your throw and you're pointing your fingers towards your target. But that's the throwing motion. I recommend that you keep it simple, keep it basic. Don't try to manipulate too many things because it's just gonna get you all out of whack, discombobulated, right? Keep it simple, keep it athletic, keep it natural, and I hope this helps. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and really quickly before you go, I created a free gift that I wanna share with you. It's my velocity hacks. These are three hacks that are guaranteed to take your throwing velocity to that next level, and it's 100% free. All you have to do to grab my velocity hacks is just click on the very first link below this video in the description. That'll take you to my website. I just need your email address so I know where to send these hacks and I'll send them right over. So do that now. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button, get in the comment section below and let me know what you'd like to see next on the channel. And as always, if you're not already, be sure to subscribe because we're coming out with new videos every single week. So thank you so much for watching and until next time, I'm out.